This video is a quick and dirty tutorial on how I do my B-carb inlays. After I set the parameters for the workpiece and import the inlay, I like to set the initial pocket size for the inlay. I use a start depth of 0 mm and a flat depth of 6 mm. I use the metric system as my CNC is set up that way, but the same principles apply using Imperial or USA measurements as well. I use a 1 8 inch or 3.175 millimeter end mill to hog out large sections of the inlay and a 15 degree tapered ball nose bit configured as a V bit. The bits I use are listed in the video description through my Amazon affiliate links. You click the link and make a purchase, I get a small stipend on the purchase of the sale. The price remains the same whether you purchase through my link or not. I like to keep my projects in a single file, so I create separate sheets with the dimensions of the workpiece I'll use. Click on Sheets, Add New, and name the sheet. Next, select the Edit to set the dimensions of the sheet. Once my new sheet is defined, I'll go back to the Drawing tab, zoom out, and see all of the sheets. I double click on the main sheet, highlight the vectors I intend to cut a plug for, and copy them. Next, I double click on the sheet I want to use, paste the copied vectors while they're still highlighted. I click the Mirror button and Mirror to the right. Then I press F9 to center the image. Next, I take the outermost vector, select it, and click on the offset button. I try to make a 10 to 15 millimeter offset. Now we're ready for the toolpaths. We're going to switch to the toolpath tab and select the V-carve toolpath. Uh, cutting the plug is not as straightforward as the pocket. To cut the plug you have to consider the plug depth, glue gap, and how far above the surface of the pocket you want your plug to extend. If you plan to use a bandsaw to separate the material, I recommend about a 2 millimeter gap. I use my CNC to remove the bulk material, so I set it to about a 1 millimeter gap. For my plugs, I create three individual toolpaths. This is because the start depth and the flat depth assume that the material has already been removed. So for example, if I set my start depth to 0 millimeters and the flat depth to 7 millimeters, the tool will plunge the entire 7 millimeters to begin the cut. That's going to ruin the plug. Instead, I'll start by setting a flat depth of 2 millimeters and then make a series of start depths. My first start depth will be 0, causing the cut to cut 2 millimeters in depth. My second toolpath will have a start depth of 2.5 and, and a flat depth of 2, giving me 4.5 millimeters of total depth. And then the final toolpath will have a start depth of 5, 
a flat depth of 2, giving me a total of 7 millimeters of depth. This meets the requirements of my 1 millimeter glue gap, my 5 millimeter plug length, and my 1 millimeter extended above the top of the pocket. After I finish cutting the film, I'm going to go to the bandstand and cut off all the excess material so you want to buy the thread and just a little bit of excess material on the thread. I do a dry fit of the plug into the pocket and then I do the glue up. Uh, be careful to get glue in all the spots inside the plug and don't be afraid to use a lot of glue when you do this. You want to make sure that all the sides of the pocket are good and that you get a nice tight get, uh, plug. Hammer it in if you need to. And then what I like to do, I like to use a press in order to make sure that my inlay has got firm pressure amongst the entire width and length of the inlay. The final tool path we need to make is the clearance tool path to clear out our excess material from the top of the work surface. For this I use a quarter inch or 6.35 millimeter down cut bit. I create an offset about 10 to 15 millimeters outside the outermost vector. Next I create a pocket tool path on that vector. Now the trick I use to do my clearance is that I'll set both a start and flat depth of zero. Then when I 
export the job, I'll set my Z offset to the top of the workpiece and uh, execute the job. This will glide across the top of the workpiece without taking off any of the top layer of the piece, but clearing all the material. Only do this if your CNC is capable of cutting the thickness of the excess material you have at the top. When it's time to sand, I use 60, 80, and 100 grit sanding discs. I follow this by raising the grain with water and then continuing on with 120, 220, and 320 grit paper. I will mark the surface of the pencil between sanding and make sure all the pencil marks have been sanded off to ensure a flat surface.